Good morning, everyone. We are now entering into our 19th day of our restricted movement. We thank God that we are able to gather like this, and that although we are all in our own homes, uh, we are able to give thanks to God for giving us such technology that we are able to uh, look at His words, contemplate and ponder over who He is. There are many things that we don't understand today, many things that we read in our WhatsApp messages uh, from the internet uh, about this pandemic, COVID-19. Perhaps we may not understand all of it, but what is important is that in the quietness of our own homes, God is still there. God is looking over us and God is watching us. It is important for us then to realize who God is. And perhaps this morning we will spend some time to meditate over what God thinks is the most important thing for us to do. Have you ever thought about this yourself? What do you think is the most important instruction that God has given us today? Do you know it? Do you want to know it? And are you doing it? I want us this morning to spend a little time to think about God. Think about how He loves us and think about what He expects us in loving Him. Did you know that there is such a thing called the greatest commandment? Did you know that God has given us the greatest commandment, the most important commandment? In Matthew chapter 22, reading from verse 34 to 36, this is what it says. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them who was a lawyer, somebody who knows the Torah, asked him, Jesus, a question, testing him and saying, Teacher or Rabbi, which is the greatest commandment in the law. And what do you think Jesus said? Jesus said to him, and this is what Jesus replied, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Now, if you take a look at these two verses, the two words that I want to point your attention to is the word first and then the greatest. First would mean first in rank, the foremost, or the most important. The greatest would also mean the most important. In, in fact, Jesus is saying the first and the greatest, the most important instruction that God has given us is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. And in verse 39, he adds, and the second is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. In a parallel gospel, the gospel of Mark chapter 12, reading from verse 29 to 31, and Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, same thing, the word first is the most important. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And this is from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, verse 30. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. This is the first commandment, the most important commandment. Verse 31. And the second is like, namely this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's Leviticus 19 verse 18. There is no other commandment or instructions greater than these. All of a sudden, I want us to think and think very carefully. Jesus have described to us 
the two most important instructions in the Bible. Do you know these instructions? I'm sure we would have read this, but were you aware that Jesus is positioning this and giving us this important thought that the most important thing that God has ever given us are these instructions to love him and to love your neighbor. We come to Matthew 22 again, verse 40. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That's the entire Old Testament. Now this picture, the illustration, gives us this important imagery. There are two nails on the wall, the longer and the shorter. And the first one is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. The second one is Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. These are the two commandments like nails on the wall. The entire law and prophets is the entire Old Testament is now hanging off these two commandments, these two most important instructions, basically telling us in order for us to know what God said in the entire Old Testament scripture, we must first understand these two most important instructions. Love God with all our heart and all our soul and all our might. And the second one, to love our neighbors as ourselves. In order to appreciate what God is doing, in order to appreciate what God is saying, in order to appreciate who God is, these are the two most important instructions. Master them, learn them, know them, and do them. And the rest of Scripture will open up to us. What is the greatest commandment, really? We are reading now Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. The Hebrew reads this way. Wa'afta et Yehovah Eloheka bakol levavka vebakol nefeshka vebakol meotka. In the English, it merely says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. The word love is a hav. It literally means to give, to provide, to protect. Your heart is your mind, your will, your determination, your choices. And your soul is everything you are inside. And with all your strength, with all your might, with all the force, and with all the abundance you have in your life. This is how you should love your God, basically, to give of everything we are and have to God. All our choices, our innermost being, and everything we have in power and in abundance. Abundance. Love is to give. Love is not a feeling inside that we feel good and we feel giddy. God doesn't want that kind of a feeling. God wants us to give of all of us to Him. This is what the greatest commandment and instruction is saying. Let's take a quick look at what the Old Testament says besides me saying that. What is love in Hebrew? Ahav, that's the Hebrew word. It means to give, to provide, to protect, to take care. You see, in the Hebrew, love is not a feeling. Love is something that you do. You express what you know and feel inside by actions, by giving, by providing, by protecting, and by taking care of the other. 
In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, this is what it says. The Lord did not set his love on you nor choose you, that's Israel, because you were more in number than any other people, for you were the least of all peoples. But because the Lord loves you, and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. You see, when the Lord loves Israel, he keeps his oath to the fathers. He brings them out, he rescues them and redeems them from Egypt. You see, love can be seen. When God says he loves Israel, he saves them. Continuing on in verse 9, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. You see, those who love God must keep his commandments, not just talk about love. Ahav means to do something of yourself to the other person. And so if we love him, we must keep his commandments. Again, in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 1, you shall therefore love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his rules, and his commandments always. To love the Lord you need to keep his commandments. Finally, we come to Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 5. But the Lord your God would not listen to Bil'am. Instead, the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loved you. You see, when God loved them, God turned the curse into a blessing for them. This is how God loves. He does something to express that love. And so you see, ahav in the Hebrew is to give, to support, to protect, to take care. And as God loved Israel to give them the good things, to support them, to protect them and take care of them, God turns the curse into a blessing for them. This is what God means by loving now let us take a look at the definitions of love in the New Testament. Is there a difference? Our first verse is John chapter 3, verse 16. A very, very familiar verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, when God loves the world, he gave his only begotten Son. Love is to give. Love is not a feeling. It will be a very sad thing for us if that was how God loves. So the Hebrew idea of love is carried forward into the New Testament. God loved the world. God gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, for us. In John chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Doesn't this sound similar to the verses we have read in the Old Testament? Love has to be expressed. It is to support, is to give ourselves to do something about it. So Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Which means that if we don't keep the commandments of Jesus, we don't love him. Although we may say it or sing it or think it, Love has to be expressed. Right at the end of the Gospel of John, in chapter 21, verse 15, Jesus, after the resurrection, came to Simon Peter and said, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me more than these? And then he said, feed my lambs. You see, loving Jesus requires us to give ourselves to do something for him, to keep his commandments, to do things, to feed his lambs. We look at what Paul 
has said about love in his epistles. We begin reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 22 to 24. He writes, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the saviour of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. I want to point out that the church comprises of both men and women, and as such, collectively, we are subject to Christ. We are to submit to Christ, who is the head of the church. And in verse 25, Paul concludes, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. You see, the Hebrew idea of love is all through the New Testament as well. Paul expresses it. Christ loved the church. Christ gave himself for it. And so, husbands, love your wives in exactly the same way. If you give your lives to your wives, your wives will submit to you. And as the church is to submit to Christ, because Christ gave his life for the church. Now in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, a very familiar verse, and this ties to our explanation of the Hebrew concept of love. Love is to give. So God loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. When we are to love God with all our heart and all our soul and all our might, what exactly does Paul think about that? Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You see, Paul tells us, if we are to love God, then we are to give of every being of us to God. And that is love. We cannot say that we love God at part of the time of the week. We cannot say we love God with a little bit of what we have. If we don't love God with every fiber of our being, with all our choices and with everything that we possess, that is not the greatest commandment. Then it would be, do what you think is best. Is that what God said about the greatest commandment? No. He wants us to give all of us to him. And so when Paul comes to this big chapter on love in 1 Corinthians 13, reading from verses 4 to 7, Paul expresses this as something that can be seen, can be recognized, that it is not a feeling inside. This is what he says, Love is suffers long or is long-suffering. Love is kind. Love envies not. Love wants not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself rudely, seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, keeps no record of evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So a person who is said to be expressing love can be seen. It is not a song. It is not something that is said, but it's something that is done. And so you can see, love is not about emotions. Love is about giving, in providing, in protecting, in caring, and in keeping. For God, in the same way, loved the world that he gave. Love provided us a way for salvation. God loved us so that we can be saved. He gave us a way out. That is love. Does God love us today? Yes. The message of salvation is the message of love that is given to us all over the world. 
Now there is a Hebrew idiom that we have missed, and I would like us to pay attention to that. This Hebrew idiom is also expressed in Second Kings chapter twenty-three about Josiah. In verse twenty-five, now before him there was no king. There is previous to him there is no king like Josiah, who turned to the Lord with. All his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses. Not after him did any kings arise like him. So basically, this phrase, "all your heart, all your soul, and all your might," this is a Hebrew idiom. When we are to love God with all our heart and soul and might, we are to give every fiber and every choices we make and everything we possess. To God, and so when King Josiah turned to the Lord, he didn't turn to the Lord part of the time, a little portion of him, but with all his heart, all his soul, and all his might. The question to us this morning is this: Is this how we love the Lord our God with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our might? This is what God wants. Now that we have studied to understand the Hebrew meaning of love, as well as seeing all the verses in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, it is very much about giving. It's much about providing and doing something about it. And so, when God loved the world, God loved you and I. He gave His only begotten Son, and Christ loved the church. He gave Himself for her. So how can we respond? How? What do you think you can do about this? Do you know God? Do you know Jehovah? Do you acknowledge Him as your only Elohim, as your only God? This is the most important question that we need to answer. Who is God to you? Is He somebody we sing about, we talk about? But really, is he someone who is the number one, the only one in our lives? If we say that Jehovah is the only God in our lives, then, then we need to demonstrate to love Him with all our will, to demonstrate that we love Him with our entire being and every fiber of the being, and. The abundance and the might that we possess, and to love others as we love ourselves. Do we do that? How do we love God in this way? Are we doing what He wants us to do? Are we obeying the most important instructions that He has given us? To love God with all our heart and all our soul and all our might, do we have priorities that is bigger than God? That no matter what happens, we cannot let go. Is it a habit? Is it a person? Is it a thing? That when you have to choose between that and God, that you would choose the other and not God. Are、uh, our actions, the way we live, the way we behave, the way we say things, the way we act, reflect this holy God that we believe that He is the only God in our lives? Are we giving everything we are and have to Him? Are we helping our neighbors in need with what we have? You see. We keep saying that these two commandments hang all the law and prophets, but most of the time we tend to ignore, or we tend to forget, that we are to love God with everything we have got, and yet we live life without this understanding of God, without this thought of God in our lives. How do we live? The things we do with our friends, the things we do with our family, are we taking care of them with all we've got? 
Are we making sure that they are safe? Are we making sure that they are provided for? That is love. When we say we love God, are we giving our entire self and being to doing what reflects Him? Perhaps we can ask ourselves, you know, husbands, do you love your wife by giving your life to her? As Christ loved the church and gave himself for her? That is what we are expected to do as husbands. And in so doing, then wives will naturally submit to the husband. As the church, both men and women, should submit to Christ because Christ gave his life for us. Children, do you love your parents by honouring them? Do you respect them? Believers, as Christians, do we love each other as Christ loved you? How did Christ love us? By giving his life for us. So when we say we love each other, it is not a lip service, but really when one is in need, we should give of ourselves with what we have to them. That is loving your neighbor as you love yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. If we do these things and we examine our lives and we want to do it for the glory of God. It is not because we want to show off, but it is how love is expressed. Love is about giving. Giving ourselves to God in everything that we have that we want to do and giving ourselves to our neighbors and our fellow believers so that they too can see the love of God through us to them. I trust that we have come to this point of understanding that God wants us to love Him as the most important instruction and to love our neighbours as we love ourselves. The question remains, are we doing that? Not that we know, but we ought to do something about it. If this is the most important thing, that God wants us to do, it means that everything else we think is important is actually not that important after all. In our homes, in our families, at work, with our colleagues, with our business partners, with our brothers and sisters in the Lord, are we showing this love of giving of ourselves to them. I trust that we will slowly appreciate this because God loves us this way and expects us to love Him the same. May God bless all of us.